What's up, y'all? As always, welcome to the channel. So recently, an SDA pastor friend of mine was teaching through the Sabbath School Quarterly, and he made a stunning admission. Stunning. Sort of. What's stunning about it is he doesn't even know that he made it. In alignment with our mission, it provides us with an important point that needs to be underscored regarding Adventism, something that cannot be overstated. But before looking at that, let's lay some groundwork, shall we? Now, it's no secret that one of the rally cries of our platform is Galatians 1, 6 through 9, where Paul plainly tells us there's only one gospel. Any other message labeled as the gospel is cursed by God, and it's a counterfeit. The Holy Spirit through the apostle then goes on to tell us in verse 12 that the gospel the apostles preached was given to them by Jesus Christ himself. When we examine to find further clarification on this gospel, the Holy Spirit through Paul lays out in the simplest of terms what that message is in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8, where we read that, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. So the gospel is the good news about the person and work of Jesus, the forgiveness of sins through the vicarious death, burial, and resurrection of the God-man, who in accordance with the scriptures accomplished the redemption of all things. By a living faith in the person and work of Christ, sinners can find complete forgiveness, newness of life, and eternal treasures. In fact, this is the message and mission of the Christian church. We read in Luke 24, for example, that the message of repentance and forgiveness of sins by way of the person and work of Jesus was to be taken to all the world, beginning with the apostles. Then at his ascension, we also see the Lord Jesus give another aspect of this good news, and that's the authority by which the church was sent out on mission. In Matthew 28, 16 through 20, Jesus tells us that he possesses all authority in heaven and on earth, so go therefore taking the good news to the ends of the world, which speaks to the kingly rule rule and reign of Jesus, and why he referred to the gospel as the gospel of the kingdom. By conquering Satan's sin and death, the Lord Jesus purchased all of the creation with his own holy blood, not just the church, which is why the rule and reign of the Messiah was foretold by the Old Testament prophets as the one who would come and establish his kingdom that would be an everlasting kingdom with a dominion that knows no ends. This is precisely what Jesus did, and he sits on his throne in heaven ruling and reigning over all of his enemies as they are being made his footstool, which is why before giving the Great Commission to the disciples, he tells them that he has all authority in heaven and on earth, and it's by that authority that he sent them into the world to preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the triune God, and teaching them to obey all that he has commanded them. Simply put, the message of the Christian church is Jesus Christ's gospel, and the mission of the church is to take that gospel to the whole world. Now, with this in mind, like I mentioned, let's listen to a short clip from an SDA pastor friend of mine and pay very close attention to what he says. We read in the lesson on page 106, central to mission, God's mission, is the message. God's message, that is, the gospel. The message, the author writes, in a real sense, is the mission. The message is the mission. We must never lose sight of our special calling and mission which is to proclaim to a lost world the hope found in the everlasting gospel, as well as to warn the world of what will one day come upon it. I just love how the author brings this out. The message is the mission. If we say we are Christians on a mission and we don't have a message, well, then we have no, no mission at all. The author goes on to say, It is urgent that the gospel be proclaimed and the serious news about Satan's strategies be exposed. And that is exactly what the three angels' messages and our mission are all about. So we are now going to be taking a deeper dive into these three angels' messages, which are the, the last message, we, what we call present truth, gospel, present truth gospel, the gospel in its present truth form to be proclaimed to the last day inhabitants of planet Earth. So notice, the SDA church has their own unique mission that only they are spreading. 
It does not go back to the apostles in any fashion as it was not for them. It was only for an end times people. And why is that? Because of that sneaky culprit of present truth that just can't seem to keep its nose out of everything. When the SDA church and her members say this, they are indirectly admitting that they're not a part of the Christian church. They have a different Jesus who sent them on a different mission with a different message inspired by a different spirit. And as the apostle Paul warns us, for I feel a divine jealousy for you, since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, and if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. I appreciate Aaron's open admission, and I actually agree with him but not in the way that he might think. <laughs> I agree with the indirect affirmation that the SDA movement is not a part of the Christian church, as I have been saying this for a very long time, and this is one of the many reasons. They have their own unique gospel, their own mission, and their own Jesus that they are taking to the world, all of which stand in contradistinction to the mission, message, and Jesus of the Christian church. The Christian church does not have multiple missions, multiple gospels, or multiple Jesuses, which is all the more reason why Christians have to be fulfilling the Great Commission by taking the true Christ and his gospel to Seventh-day Adventists, beating down the gates of hell with the truth. Oh, and by the way, we've responded to a statement in the same vein from Aaron's boss, Doug Batchelor, which only further affirms this indirect admission. If you want to check that out, you can in three, two, one. God bless.